Now, let's look at when this happened. You turn with me to Luke chapter 22. I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were, which were written in the Torah of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Now remember what he said in Jeremiah. He is going to write it on their hearts and he's going to open it up in their minds. And then he said to them, thus is written, and thus was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and rise from, the, from death on the third day. And repentance and remission of sin will be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are a witness of these things. Behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you. And tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you endure with the power from on high. I'm going to keep going. Uh, turn with me to the book of Acts. This is a continuation of what's being said here in Luke. How many of you know Luke wrote both the book of, uh, his book, Luke, and it's named after him, but he also wrote the book of Acts. So the book of Acts is actually a continuation of Luke. The former I account, the former account I made of Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, and teach until the day which he had was taken up after he, he through the Holy Spirit had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering being made infallible being uh, by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking to speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. How many days was Moses on Mount Sinai talking to Jesus? 40 days. How many days did Jesus after his resurrection speak to his disciples? 40 days. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So Jesus he is the Passover lamb. He is also the unleavened bread. It's also known in Hebrew as the bread of affliction. The, if you've ever seen a piece of unleavened bread, it's striped, it's pierced, and it's bruised. It has been made the same way for five, six thousand years. It's square now. But the same process has been used for 5,000 years or more. Who knows? But that same process, so when they looked at the unleavened bread, when they saw what had happened to their master, when they saw what had happened to the Messiah, and he rem they remembered all of those things, and they would begin at that point to start tying things together. He's the Passover lamb, not a bone shall be broken. He was taken down from the cross and not a bone was broken. As a matter of fact, the two thieves' legs were broken, but he was pierced through his side. He is the unleavened bread. Leaven, Paul refers to leaven as sin. He was sinless, without blemish. And he was pierced, bruised, and striped by the Romans' whip, by... The, the nails that pierced his hands and he was bruised and beaten about his face and head and shoulders by Roman guards he is the unleavened bread 
but by the power and might of God, he was also the first fruits from the ground because after three days he rose from that grave and he walked out alive. Amen. So he is all three feasts tied up into one. Now he's taking on the fourth feast. He told his disciples that I am going to go up to my father after teaching them for 40 days. So they sat in the upper room for how many days? Ten. They sat in the upper room waiting for ten days. I thought about that last night and I thought, you know what? I think God improved upon his plan a little bit because he left them waiting for 40 days and they messed up. I better only leave them waiting for ten days this time. So after ten days, Jesus has promised them now, in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, so meaning that they had counted all 50 days, and they were actually sitting down to have their meal celebrating the Feast of Shavuot. And they were all in one accord. Remember last week we talked about Echad. They were all in one accord. They were in agreement together. They had been unified. They had seen the death of their Messiah, but they had also seen the resurrection of their Messiah. And in His glorified self, He had gone to His Father. Because remember, the woman who met Him at, the, the, uh, at His tomb, He said, Do not touch Me, for I have not yet ascended to My Father. But yet when He met with Thomas, He said, Touch Me. Put your finger in my wounds. So he had ascended to his father. He had accomplished everything that was set to be accomplished. And then he came back for those 40 days and taught them everything there was to know. Everything that they were going to have to do. All the things that they would do in his name. He taught them for 40 days. Isn't that amazing? So for 10 days they waited in the upper room. And they were in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing, a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then appeared to them divided tongues as fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking with their tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now let's look at that. There's a... Dr. David Stern, he's a Jewish man, and he <coughs> translated the scriptures. He took everything back from Greek to Hebrew and then retranslated it to English. And this is his, uh, his translation. The festival of Shavuot arrived, and believers all gathered together in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from the sky like a roar of a violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And he saw what looked like tongues of fire, which separated and came to rest on each of them. They were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, which is Holy Spirit, and began to talk in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Now, in most cases, a Pentecostal preacher would tell you that they all spoke in tongues. A Jewish man took the Greek back to Hebrew, and then to English, and said that isn't what happened. What came down on the disciples looked like tongues of fire and fell on each and every one of them. And they spoke in a different language than what was native to them. And they, and it was only what God gave them utterance. And if you kept going in that and kept reading, it actually says that people from around the other nations were hearing their native voice, their native tongue, spoken by the men of Jerusalem, which was unheard of. 